how much land does a man need? This is the lesson by Leo Tolstoy, which we have to deal with today. Here, in the previous lecture, we have seen about the author Leopold Tolstoy, then about the given text or about the given prose, and also we have started. How much land does a man need by Leo Tolstoy, in which we have completed first part of the how much land does a man need? Now we have in all first, second, third. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and nine. These are the parts which we have to be. In the second part, close to the village, there lived a lady, small land owner. Who had an estate of about three hundred acres? She had always lived on good terms with the peasants until she engaged as her steward and old soldier, who took the burdening the people with the fines. However, careful Pahom tried to be. It happened again and again. Now a horse of his got among the living oats. Now a cow strayed into the her garden. Now his black cows found their way into her meadows, and she always had to pay a fine. Pahom paid, but. Grumbled and going home in a temper was enough. Sorry, was rough with his family. All through this summer, Pahom had much trouble because of this steward, and he was even glad when winter came and the cattle had to be stabled. Though he grunted the fodder when they could no longer graze on the Pasture lands. At least he was free from anxiety about them. In the winter, the news got about that the lady was going to sell her land, and that the keeper of the inn on the high road was bargaining for it. When the peasants heard this, they were very much alarmed. Well, thought they, if the innkeeper gets the land, he will worry us with the fines worse than the lady's steward. We all depend on that estate. So the peasants went on behalf of their commune and asked the lady not to sell the land to the innkeeper, offering her a better price for it themselves. The lady agreed to let them have it. Then the peasants tried to arrange for commune to buy commune to buy the whole estate, so that it might be held by in common. They met twice to discuss it, but could not settle the matter. The evil one sowed discord among them, and they could not agree. So they decided to buy the land individually. 
which according to this means that and lady agreed to this plan as she had to the other presently pahom heard that a neighbor of his was buying 50 acres and that the lady had consented to accept one half in cash and wait a year for the other half pahom felt envious look at that thought he the land is all being sold and i shall get none of it so he spoke to his wife other people are buying said he and we must also buy 20 acres or so life is becoming impossible that steward is simply crushing us with his fines so they put their heads together and considered how they could manage to buy it they had 100 rubles sorry rubles laid by they sold a colt and one half of their beasts hired out one of their sons as a laborer and took his wages in advance borrowed the rest from brother in law and so scrap together half the purchase money having done the having done this pahom chose out a farm of 40 acres some of it woody some of it wooded and went to the lady to bargain for it they came to an arrangement and she shook lands shook hands with her upon it and paid her a this this deposit in advance then they went to town and signed the deeds he paying half the price down and undertaking to pay the remainder within 2 years so now pehom had land of his own he borrowed seeds and sowed it on the land he had brought the harvest was good one and within a year he had managed to pay off his debts both to the lady and to his brother in law so he became a land owner flowing and sowing his own land making hay on his own land cutting his own trees and feeding his cattle on his own pasture when he went out to plow his field or he to look to look at growing corn or at his grass meadows his heart would fill with the joy the grass that grew and flowers that bloomed there seemed to him unlike they unlike any that grew elsewhere formerly when he had passed by that land it had appeared the same as any other land but now it seemed quite different here this one is the second part where we have this man that is the pahom was the tenant or the peasant he was tilling the land of that land lady or the land owner where the steward used to take the fines of from these peasants and these all the peasants were unhappy from the land lady or the owner and then after we have that one day the lady announced to sell out her 300 acres land and this man became unhappy because the lady was selling the land to the nearby person and that person may not give the land to this pahom as a tenant so the pahom was not stable and he decided to buy land for his own here see the line is there
where the AV is the word used. Huh. Peham heard that the neighbor of his was buying the 50 acres of land and they, that the lady had consented to accept one half in cash and wait for a year for the other half. And Peham felt envious. The neighbor of the Peham was buying 50 acres of land and on the side of one year. Then the Peham contacted the lady and asked her to sell him 40 acres of land. And then Peham collected the money from his own house, sold whatever he had at his home, then sent his son as a labor and took the advance of a year. Then he borrowed the remaining amount from his brother in law and then gave half amount of that 40 acres to the lady and on the side of, side of two years and then as the Pahom become the land owner of the 40 acres and then Pahom's Pahom here borrowed the seed, sold it and the land he had bought and the harvest was good and within a year he had managed to pay off the debts both of the landlady and of his brother-in-law. And in this way the Pahom become the landlord. This is the second part. We have the third part here. So Peham was well contended and everything would have been right if the neighboring peasants would only not have <coughs> trespassed on his corn field and meadows. He appealed to them most severely but they still went on. Now the communal herdsmen would let the village cows stray into his meadows. Then horses from the night pasture would get among his corn. Pahom turned them out again and again and forgave their ones. And for a long time he forbore from prosecuting anyone. But at last he lost patience and complained to the district court. He knew it was the peasants want the of land and no evil intended on their part. That caused the trouble but he thought I cannot go on overlooking it and they will destroy all I have. They must be taught a lesson. So he had them gave a one lesson and then another and two or three of the peasants were fine. After a time, Pahom's neighbor began to bear him and grudge for this and would now and then let their cattle on his land on purpose. One peasant even got into Pahom's wood at night and cut down five young lion tree for their bark. Pahom passed through, passed through Pahom passing through the saw the street trunks lying on the ground and close by the stool stumps where the tree had been. Pahom was furious. If he had only cut one here and there he would have been bad enough. Though Pahom but the rascal has actually cut down a whole clump. If I could only find out who did this, I would pay him out. He racked his brain as to who it would be. Finally, he decided it must be.